I'm Erin Ryder, news editor of The Horse, your guide to equine healthcare. We're at the University of Kentucky's Gluck Equine Research Center, where we're joined today by Dr. Peter Timoney, who will be going over the basics of equine pyroplasmosis. Dr. Timoney, thank you for joining us today. What causes pyroplasmosis? Pyroplasmosis is caused by two protozoan parasites. One of them is called Babesia cabali, and the other one is called Babesia equi, or more recently it's referred to as Tyleria equi. How are the causative organisms spread? These are blood-borne parasites, so clearly there must be association with the blood. Normally, under natural conditions, the disease and the causative parasites are transmitted by ticks that are competent to transmit the particular parasites in question. Um, the infection can also be spread through the use of contaminated instruments, and through the use of contaminated syringes and needles that are used on carrier animals and then subsequently used on naive or previously unexposed animals. Additionally, the, um, both parasites can be transmitted through uh, infective blood transfusions or s transfusions of serum. Mm -hmm. And finally, there is certain evidence that, in fact, either of these two parasites can be transmitted by the congenital means. In other words, um, where the foal in utero is exposed to either parasite becomes congenitally infected and is indeed born congenitally infected with either Babesia cabali or Tyleria equi. Is there anything that horse owners can do to protect their animals from this disease? Um, at this point, there is very little that a horse owner can do to protect their uh, animals against this disease. We're assuming that the parasites are not present in the environment, so really um, the most effective means of preventing exposure of horses to it would be to have means of preventing tick attachment or control of ticks on horses. Um, grazing tick-infected pastures where the disease is known to occur. Um, however, that would be logistically quite onerous and expensive. Um, but at this point, there are no ongoing programs uh, such that owners can follow and implement them for the purposes of protecting their horses against exposure with either parasite. What are the clinical signs? Um, both of these two parasites, the clinical symptoms rather, um, caused by either of these two parasites are no different. They mimic one another. But normally infection with Babesia or Thyleria equi tends to produce a more severe disease um, in naive horses, where in fact clinical signs do develop. Um, those clinical signs during the acute phase of the infection may comprise purely weakness loss of appetite, and also um, as the disease becomes more chronic, anemia, fever, jaundice, rough hair coat, and basically general debilitation and difficulty in breathing or shortness of breathing. Do you have any idea the percentage of horses that would be infected subclinically? Um, the percentage could be very significant, and as you're well aware, there has been in recent weeks confirmation of the occurrence of seropositive horses in southern Texas. And in fact, on that particular premises, only one horse is reported to have been clinically affected with the um, particular organism, which was Babesia equi or Thyleria equi. All of the other seropositive horses found in that index premises. Uh, were considered to be subclinically infected. At no point were they considered to have been clinical or to have shown clinical signs suggestive of pyroplasmosis. What are the treatment options? Treatment options um, are somewhat limited. They obviously will vary depending on whether you're dealing with infection with either Babesia cabali or Babesia equi. There's very recent um, information to suggest that a drug called amidocarb can be used successfully to eliminate the parasite from horses chronically infected with Babesia, e Babesia cabali. Um, that finding was reported by researchers at, the, at Washington State University, um, primarily by Dr. Don Knowles and his colleagues. So that certainly would seem to offer promise as a means of 
treatment of Babesia cabali infection. However, in relation to Babesia equi, the results aren't quite so clear cut. There is um, an ongoing study at the National Veterinary Services Laboratory in Ames in Iowa looking at um, the response of horses chronically infected with Thyleria or Babesia equi with the same drug. And at this point, um, the final outcome of that study is not available, so we can't say for sure whether, in fact, it's going to be successful or not. But historically, and based on anecdotal information from the field, there certainly are indications that cleansing horses of chronic Tyleria or Babesia equine infection can present much greater problems than um, cleansing them of chronic infection with Babesia cabali infection. Interestingly, um, and this is based on extensive work that was done by Dr. Ralph Knowles, formerly of the USDA, Avis Veterinary Services, um, who has many years of experience of treating horses in various countries for pyroplasmosis. He has found that very often it depends on the geographic region of the world or the country where the horses are located as to whether they're likely to be responsive to treatment or not. And certainly this would indicate that even though it's the same parasite, that the same parasite coming from a different geographic location may turn out to be more attractive, more difficult to eliminate from a chronically infected or carrier horse than might be the case with respect to a similarly infected horse from another region of the world. How has the U.S. handled positive horses in past outbreaks? In past occurrences or confirmation of um, pyroplasmosis seropositive horses, um, the USDA basically has had a policy of either requiring that those horses be returned to the country of origin if they represent a recent imported horse, or that they be kept confined on the premises on which they've been found or detected to be positive, or indeed, unfortunately, that they be euthanized if, in fact, the conditions on the premises index premises are not such that they can be maintained in a tick-free environment. And where can people learn more about equine py pyroplasmosis? Um, the U.S. Department of Agriculture's APHIS, or Animal Plant Health Inspection Service, Veterinary Services, um, is a very useful source of information. They've developed a fact sheet on the disease that is available to anybody who chooses to access their website, and it can be available or um, provided free of charge. Additionally, there um, is a significant, um, there's significant expertise uh, in terms of knowledge of the disease, as well as how to diagnose it, how to deal with seropositive horses, at the USDA's Agriculture Research Service facility at, um, in Pullman in Washington State, and that's affiliated with the College of Veterinary Medicine, um, sharing the same address. And that's under the aegis or uh, administration of Dr. Don Knowles, who's one of the world's experts on equine pyroplasmosis. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Timoney. You're welcome.